In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can create a slideshow where you cause the pictures to move on the screen from one direction and off on another in a sequence, kind of like a conveyor belt. This comes as a request of one of my subscribers. I'd like to show you how to do it the way they designed it, and then I'll show you a variation that you might find interesting. Please look at the following examples. So the first thing we're going to do is put a background and so I'm going to move and click on in the media room on the little blue diamond, open up my color board options and we'll go down to one that is a little bit of a gradient. I'll take this one here, drag it to this track, we'll click on the time code and let's make it a good 10 seconds long. Now let's make it longer than that. I'll just stretch it out for much longer than I need. And then we're going to click back here again and go back to media content. Next thing I want to do is take my slides for my slideshow. I just have nine random ones here. And I can determine how long I want them to take to get across the screen by their duration. Now you can control, control the duration by clicking on the gear in the upper right corner. And I can click on editing. And here is the duration in seconds. So it's set to five right now. I could make it shorter or longer. Whatever I choose, that will be the duration of all the slides. Let's leave it at five for now. And so we'll take them and we'll move them across the screen. I'm going to take and drag here. And here I have my slides. Now, they're all solid. They're in the middle. They're the wrong size. Let's fix that on one of them and then copy it to the rest. So I'm going to take the leftmost one and double click. That will get me into my PIP designer. Once I'm in my PIP designer, I'm going to change the size of the slide. I click on it and then we'll reduce it. Maybe that's a good size right there. Then I'm going to make sure my playhead is all the way to the left. I'm going to click on the position diamond to set it. And now we're going to move the position off the screen to the left. And when I see the pink lines, I know it's right in the middle. We could go anywhere we want, but that makes it easy. Then we're going to go to the very end, the last frame in our five seconds, and then we'll drag it over and make sure we have that on the same line. It's going horizontally. And so now it's on the right. I'm going to click on OK. The next thing I want to do is copy these values to the other slides. So I right click on the one I just edited, click Copy Keyframe Attributes. Then I highlight the rest of them and right click on the group and do Paste Keyframe Attributes. And now if we want to play the ones that we've done so far, there's the first one taking five seconds to move across the screen and then the second one and the third one in line. Now if I want some of them to share screen time and all move together, let me show you how to do that. I have to des decide how far apart I want them to be. And so what I'm going to do is I'll stop this and we're going to set some markers up here. So I'm going to change my feature in the middle. If I click down here, it moves me by frame. I want to move by second. And I can click on the second by clicking on this icon or pressing the period key. So I'll go in two seconds. And then I'm going to right click and add a timeline marker. Now you notice here it says you can press the M key. That's a lot faster, but that interferes with my screen capture software. So I have to do it the hard way. But if I were to do it without this, I would simply press the M key. But you get this screen. I'm going to click on OK. I don't need to name them. Now I'm going to press the period key twice and we'll do the same thing. Clicking on OK. And I'll just set a bunch of these. And what you could do as well is you could modify this so that the distance 
between these markers is maybe three seconds or four seconds, however you like to do it. I just picked two for now. But what I need to do now, if I'm going to change this, is I have to stack these. So I'm going to take these and stack them one upon another. And we're just using the video tracks. So I'll take this one and we'll go to the first marker, the blue line, let go, and it will adjust it accordingly. Now I'm going to go to the next one down and click on that blue line and there it is. But I've run out of tracks. So what I have to do is right click and I'm going to do an add tracks. I'll do zero audio and I could do up to 99 video tracks totally, but I'll just type in 12. So that'll give me plenty to work with. And I think I moved that, oh, I moved these guys down. I didn't intend to do that. So I clicked too fast, so we'll just drag them up and then resume what we were doing here. Okay, so now they're back in place again. Let's take the next one and move it. And it will stick to that little marker line. And we'll go down with the next one. And we start at the beginning. We're playing it all the way back. Let's see what it looks like in this case. So they're evenly spaced. They're moving it the same way from left to right. And of course, the number of seconds you put between them is the number amount of space you're going to have between the pictures. You could go frames rather than seconds and tighten it up, but that's a simple way to do that. Let me show you a variation in this that you might find interesting. What I'd like to do now is change the way the first one works and then copy that. So let's take the first one, go back into our PIP designer. We know we have five seconds to work with. Okay, so I'm going to change the keyframes. I'm going to move over here one second, press my time code. And let's say at one second, I want it to go this far. And I want it to get bigger. So what I'm going to do is, since I'm moving, messing with scale, I'm going to go back to the end and take a scale and put a diamond there at the beginning. I'm also going to change the rotation, put rotation. Now I haven't changed anything yet, but I've gone over to this keyframe. And here I'm going to change the scale. We'll change it up to get this big. And then I'm going to move over here. Go three seconds. I use my time code here so I can be precise. Press enter. And then here I'm going to take the scale maybe back down a little bit. And that changes the scale back down. So it will get larger here and then smaller here. Now let's do rotation. I'm going to go down to rotation and set a rotation value. Now the rotation value is zero here and zero here. But when I get to the last part of it, I'm going to have it flip out. So I'm going to the very end. And by the time it gets off the screen, I want it to rotate 360 degrees. So I'll go over, over to the left side. I'll type in 360. Press enter and it will do a one one rotation. Now let's see what that looks like. Now watch, we're just, just going to look at the first slide now. I'll drag down and we'll start at the left side and we'll play this. It gets bigger, smaller, and then flips out. Okay, now if I want to make that normative for all of the slides, all of the individual pictures, all I do is the same thing. I right click, copy keyframe attributes, and then I highlight as many of these as I can at once, right click, and we'll do paste. And we'll do the bottom ones here, right click, and we'll do paste again. And so when we look at our modified version here, what we've done is we've added a little variety to it, they will all copy each other. They will magnify, shrink, and flip. Magnify, shrink, and flip. And so you can actually take any combination of keyframe values you want and cause them to do whatever you like uh, in order to make this uniform for 
all the slides in your system. So that's an example of how you can do that in CyberLink PowerDirector.